Hello again. We're going to be solving rational equations. So we're not going to be working with expressions. We're going to actually solve a rational equation. That's basically something with an equal sign. And because it's an uh, equal sign as opposed to just an expression, there is something different that you have to do. And I remember when I was first doing this, and I couldn't, I mean, the first time I taught it was great, second year, third year, fourth year, it was fine. And then I started teaching it, and all of a sudden the connection just kind of disappeared. And I couldn't figure out why. And then I, I saw where students were making mistakes, and that was okay. And I kind of fixed that up. But uh, when you're solving an equation, a rational equation, you multiply from side to side. Uh, when you're solving a rational expression, what you do on the bottom, you do on the top. And that's uh, something to keep in mind when you're doing this, and it really does make life a lot easier. So I want to solve for x. Now we've done this before, but uh, not to the extent that you're thinking of. If there was an x in the numerator, all we'd have to do is figure out what the x value would be to make this true. What is really impairing us from doing this is the denominator, this massive thing right here, is not very conducive for us. And we've got to figure out a way to try to get rid of the denominator. Well, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm going to factor. That's the first thing. So I've got 3, so I was done with that marker, actually. 3 over x minus 7 plus, and eh, let's just put 1 over 1 for fun equals 8 over, and I want to factor x squared, subtract 9x plus 14. And students don't always, aren't always able to do that off the top of their head. That's what I'm talking about. Factoring is difficult. x times x is x squared. What times what is a positive but adds up to be negative? It's negative, negative. What times what is 14 but adds up to be negative 9? That would be negative 7 and negative 2. Okay, that's a start. Now, if I could get rid of these denominators, this would be fantastic, and I can. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the LCD or the LCM of this problem. And basically what you have to do is look at the, uh, all the denominators and see what any of them is missing. So this one has an x minus 7. It doesn't have a 1. It, that's arbitrary. It doesn't need it. Um, but it doesn't have an x minus 2. So I know that in order to figure out what my LCD is, I know it needs an x minus 7. And I know it needs an x subtracted 2. Okay. Uh, this needs both of them. This doesn't need anything. It's got everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this equation by what will cancel out all the denominators, and that's the LCD, which is x subtract 7, x subtract 2, or the uh, least common multiple, I guess, is something too. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by x subtract 7, x subtract 2. And here's what I've noticed that students made mistakes on. If I'm multiplying an equation, what I do on one term, I do on the other. But students take this, they multiply it by the numerator, and they multiply it by the denominator. No, no, no. Your denominator is 1 when you're multiplying with the LCD. Because you're not multiplying on the bottom and the top, you're multiplying side to side. What you do on one side, you do on the other. That's why it works. That's, you know, so if you have a question, why is it x minus 7, x minus No, that's an expression. What you do on the bottom, you do on the top to balance it. But in an equation, what you do on one side, you do on the other. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to multiply this junk by each term, or each fraction. Woo! That seems like it's difficult, but it's not really. So I've got 3 times x minus 7, x minus 2. Over x minus 7 times 1, which is just x minus 7. And I'm going to leave it in quantities. I'm not going to foil it out yet. Okay, plus x minus 7, x minus 2 times 1, which is just x minus 7, x minus 2, over 1 times 1, <laughs> just 1. And then I've got 8, or excuse me, equals 8 times x minus 7, x minus 2 over x minus 7, x minus 2 times 1. Now watch the magic. This is why I multiplied by the LCD, because it makes the problem manageable. You can't do that from side to side. You can only do that on each fraction. Okay, nothing cancels. Too bad. Oh, I like this one, though. I got 3 times x which is 3x 
3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Probably not going to have enough room starting here. Let me start again. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Plus x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Equals 8. I can do this problem because I don't got fractions anymore. And now I'm going to erase all this because I need room. Okay. I'll leave the original problem up. 9x. Okay. So add like terms. I've got an x squared. 3x men minus 2x men minus 7x men. It's 1x men. That's negative 6x men. Negative 6 plus 14 is 8. Uh, yeah, it's 8, pardon me. Equals 8. Okay, so far so good. Get it in standard form. Uh, get it set equal to zero. So subtract eight on both sides. X squared, subtract six x. Eight plus eight phew, equals zero. Factor out the GCF, which is x. And when I factor out the GCF, I got x minus six left over equals zero. This is incorporating everything we've learned. Use the zero product property x equals 0, x subtracts 6 equals 0, so x equals 6, and those are my two answers. And as long as I can substitute both those answers back into here, I'm fine. Uh, the answer can't be 7, because a 7 minus 7 would be a 0 in the denominator, it won't work, and the answer can't be a 2, because this factored into this. And the 2 would make this denominator 0 as well. And since none of those answers are it, those answers satisfy the equation. So x equals 0 and x equals 6 are your two answers. That's a very difficult problem, but it's good practice as well. well with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.